We are all alive, friends. We are all alive. It's an exciting, exciting game. RCB versus RR. Just before the game, Rajasthan Royals has said that they are going to give solar panels to six houses in Rajasthan for every six that has hit in this match. Basically demonstrating the confidence in RCB that RR is fully capable of winning quite a lot of sixes. So, uh, hopefully by the end of this match, uh, there's going to be solar panels across every home in Rajasthan. That is the assumption. So, great job by Rajasthan just donating everything to everybody. Fantastic initiative there. Uh, if you're new to the stream, uh, please keep your comments coming. This is entirely based on uh, comments from you and questions from you. I will talk to my guest. Uh, uh, we'll chat a little bit and we will also uh, take your questions uh, in the middle after every 10 minutes. If you're watching this later, then just do a live chat replay and you will understand everything that's happening. Today, we're leading up to RCB versus RR. We usually do a post-match, but uh, the time codes don't match. For my guest of honor, he's a journalist, an author, a WWE raconteur, and uh, just a good general guy with great hair. Uh, please give it up for Mr. Bharat Sundaresan. Mr. Bharat Sundaresan, good evening, sir. Uh, a very good evening to you. It's uh, nearly midnight here where I am. Uh, but uh, you just spoke about uh, the time codes and why we're doing a preview. Uh, there is a tagline here in Australia, and it gets used on radio quite often. Uh, you don't have right. to watch the IPL because Bharat Sundaresan does. So <laughs> not sure whether uh, that's 100% true. Bharat Sundaresan does watch yeah. most of that. So I think that's better than most what uh, the Australians do. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, OK, so uh, for those of you who don't know you, Bharat, uh, well, let's do a self-introduction for you. Uh, if you can follow Bharat online, he's written two books. One is on Raina, one is on Dhoni. And I think you've written some seven other books which are about cricket. I know you've written a lot of books. You're a, you're a very uh, book guy. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'll say this. I've written more books than I have read. So uh, I guess yeah. uh, the, it is kind of true in that sense. Uh, and I'm not even bragging here. It's just that I'm very lazy and I'm too distracted all the time. So I can't focus on reading books which is why I've written as well. I've been written in like days because that's how I function. Um, I, I can't do the whole thing. Yeah. I'll write one chapter at a time, you know, a portion of the book. And, you know, the way they show it in the movies, are better at the end. Like, you know, they have this beautiful written. I mean, uh, all my books have been written in my boxes and uh, in, in bed. I was writing anyway. So uh, Ashutosh Bajpay has come in with a comment that says Australia clearly needs geofiber because your internet is very uh, dicey at the moment, it seems like. I think if you shut off all the tabs, it might help. Uh, but uh, it'll, it'll improve over time, guys. We can, As long as you can hear the person, it's all good. It um, there's also a couple more comments coming in, which are obviously about the hair, which is uh, uh, Kalakar Kunal, who says with every stream, the net amount of hair keeps increasing. Because Bharat, you'll be glad to know that after three consecutive <laughs> bald men, you're the first... You've gone the opposite end oh. <laughs> of, of all of it. Oh, so there's no uh, gradual no. increase then. You just went from... Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Is it you're, a formula, you're on a Formula 1 track and then your, your car just takes off. It's just the immediate flight. So it's all good. Um, okay, so <laughs> let's, uh, let's get into this. Uh, Pranav Anand has a question immediately. Wow, Bharat is here. My honest question to him. Does head has a thing for only India and Indians or does it apply to Bharat too? <laughs> well, I don't think he's still aware of the fact that uh, the country's name is... Of, I mean, it was always Bharat, wasn't it? It's just like some some of your urban guys call it India. I've always called it Bharat. So, uh, which I didn't right. like let a lot of the Australians kind of know. So, but there is no team called Bharat. Uh, as of now. So, yeah. off the Travis Head is the loveliest man you'll meet from my fellow South Australian. And uh, we've always gotten along. Uh, but it's difficult not to get along with Travis Head. It's only when you have a ball in your hand and he's having one of those days, uh, it's uh, you can't yeah. stop him. Uh, but uh, yeah. he is, um, yeah, he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. And I've always gotten along with him, uh, Prono. Yeah, I mean, it, it, also great fun to watch him because I think he, I like the fact that he just, I think you, I, I don't know, was it you who said that he just decides to go for it. He's like, I'm not wasting too much time in the nets. I'm just going to get a, get a feel of it and then just go smash it. 
Uh, he's the worst batter you'll ever see in the Nets. Self-confessed. Uh, he gets out a lot, <laughs> plays a lot of ugly shots, and uh, he is quite awful to watch. And uh, and they all make fun of him actually in the Australian team. But uh, that's just how he, he he's he has this theory. He's told me this before, where he feels like because of the way he bats, it's a very homegrown technique, right? Uh, he always says that uh, at times the way he gets out, it just makes it look uglier than it is, just because he's throwing his hands and everything and, and doing it so hard. And I always had this other theory. Like I said, lovely guy. But Travis Head also bats like he speaks. It At times, it, it doesn't... You have to really pay attention to understand what Travis Head is saying. And I say it in the nicest way possible. But it's very effective. It makes sense. And that's how his batting is as well. Like, he, uh, he's not one of those... He's not your Virender Sevag or your Adam Gilchrist where every time he hits the ball, it's hit, like, perfectly and the ball speeds away. Uh, a lot of his shots will just clear the infielder or just go over this fielder or kind of trickle to the boundary. Uh, but I mean, he does hit a, a lot of boundaries, which he hits it really hard. But um, he's one of those kind of batters. You just can't get your head around uh, what he's doing. But when he yeah. does it, uh, I don't think there's anyone like it. And I've seen him do it for South Australia, Australia, uh, the strikers and uh, who's he playing for prizes as well now. So uh, he is a special player in that sense. Yeah, and there's also a lot of people who are net champions and then in the match, they don't really look as good. Like I've seen this, I've observed this even like prior to a Ranji where there's somebody, I don't want to mention specific names, but there's somebody who's just like stroking it and you're like, wow, this person looks in great form. And they're 8 of 17. It's not like they got out on the first ball on a corker. They just, yeah. they just, just got out. They just look scratchy as shit on the field. Uh, so yeah. Uh, but let, let's talk about uh, Australians in the IPL so far. Uh, because uh, there has been a, a very mixed uh, sort of bag, uh, yeah. this, this IPL, which is inevitable. Uh, I mean, most of the Australians that are not performing are oddly enough in RCB. So, so, so <laughs> what do you have to say about how this is going so far? <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, um, uh, uh, like I told you earlier, I have to do this weekly radio cross and uh, about the IPL, kind of sum up what's happened. Uh, in the week that's gone by. And it's generally, I have to talk about mostly about what the Australians have done, or, or that's a major chunk of it. And I've not had much to talk about the last two weeks. Like, that's why I've been telling them about Mayank Yadav and, uh, you know, the broad, the TRP ratings for the IPL and all of that, because the Australians have really overall not woken up. And Pat Cummins, I think, has started strongly as captain and uh, he's bowled really well. He's not really taken a big bag yeah. of wickets. Uh, uh, who else? I think uh, Cam Green has looked okay. At partly, he's played a couple of good shots so far in this IPL, but he's not got going. Glenn Maxwell's really not got going. Uh, Mitchell Stark has those two wickets now, uh, so he's off the mark. Uh, there really haven't been too many. Tim David also has struggled, hasn't he? So uh, I think Warner uh, Warner's the only one really. What he made fifty yeah, or forty nine. Yeah. Uh, and he like you know, but that's what D David Warner is more Indian than Australian at this point in that sense, <laughs> and especially at the IPL. So uh, I mean, I've never seen him dance to an Australian song, uh, and I did joke yeah, about yeah. this with Pat Cummins when he officially became Sunrisers captain. We were in New Zealand for the test, and I said, uh, "We've been in touch with Davy because you know you need to pick up the dance moves. That's you can't just become Hyderabad captain and not be dancing to." Uh, in a Telugu music, but uh, I, knowing Pat Cummins, I'd be very surprised if he does that. Uh, but you're right. I mean, the Australians have really not woken up. I mean, even if you look at the the coaches, what uh, Ricky Ponting's team haven't really done too much. Delhi, uh, Justin Langer's had, uh, I mean, his first ever IPL season. Lucknow won two matches, and uh, I mean, it's 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 a proper reinvention of Justin Langer, the coach, right here. Uh, he was like, you know, the, he, at one point it was a pretty unsavory exit. It, it was almost like this grumpy old Indian uncle who wasn't getting along with the nephews, right? That's what it was. It felt like it was a proper family drama that played out. And now that's he's used, he's just being Justin Langer, but it seems to be clicking in India. Very early doors, but uh, you know, just that little clip of his I saw the other day in social media with uh, uh, M Siddharth and him talking about how, getting rid of Virat Kohli. With a little head wobble as well, uh, it, it's somehow it's clicking, and, and uh, a lot of Australians are very keen to see how that relationship plays out. Justin Langer and IPL, but uh, from a player perspective, you're right, sort of like nobody's really thing of note that should we, we really have to talk about so far. 
I think uh, Nani Kaur four has pretty much nailed it, saying the only active Australian every match is Steve Smith, <laughs> which is which is I think pretty <laughs> fair. And 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 I also enjoy how uh, there's a lot of stuff that he's being made. I don't know if you're ca- catching any of the footage, uh, Bharat, but there's a lot of stuff on Geo where he's being made to do a lot of cringy shit, and that makes me really happy. That one of the greatest <laughs> test batters, not even in the world, but of all time, and we are like, hey. Do you want to dance a little bit? Do you want to show us some? <laughs> just making him do way weird shit. I'm like, this is great, man. It's just, it's just so nice that that uh, that uh, <laughs> Smith is. I wouldn't say humiliated, but being embarrassed in this way. Like, yeah, I mean, 2060, 70 thing when he was a uh, Pu- rising super giant Pune, whatever they were called back then. Their captain for one season and. Uh, um, uh, uh, someone I know really well called Sunandan Lele, you might have uh, crossed paths with him at some point. He got him to record this video in Marathi, and I still make Steve Smith, uh, I still, uh, still make fun of Steve Smith for that. He said, uh, player team la support kara. I mean, that's Steve Smith in Marathi, which is kind of bizarre, right? Like, there's one thing uh, having AI Steve Smith speak to you in Hindi, but real Steve Smith speaking Marathi was like just, and I, I was in the vicinity when that video was recorded. I remember all those years ago in Pune. So, uh, I've never forgiven him for that, but you're right. I mean, uh, I saw some other clip the other day where it, I, I don't know whether it was a scene from the Reservoir Dogs or what, like Naujot Singh Sidhu and all of them get out of from a car and I, I have no idea what they're doing, but uh, look, it's, it's, it's part and parcel of uh, if you are a, uh, especially if you are a foreign former cricketer or cricketer who, who, who go to India to do commentary stuff, right? Especially if you're not doing regular commentary, if you're in the studio, Eventually, you'll have to do, and, and, and I think Steve Smith's debut performance. I, I remember watching it on social media. He was standing there, uh, and everyone else is speaking in Hindi because that was the introduction of Naujot Singh Sidhu. And poor Steve Smith, I, 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 I kept, I watched that clip a few times just to observe what he was doing. And you could see Steve Smith is just standing there, and everybody's laughing. You know, this whole hoo ha about Sidhu coming back and Jatin Sapru is going. Uh, getting uh, going over the top of what Sidhu and everything is in Hindi and Steve Smith just standing there and every time someone says an English word he goes like (laughs) 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 it was quite the clip and you know look it's just uh, who knows right now I don't know whether he'll ever play IPL again Um, I think it's unlikely that he'll be in the T20 World Cup squad so this could well be Steve Smith's future when it comes to IPL uh, uh, and look, so far he seems to be warming up to it, and he's become best friends with Stuart Broad as well. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that. The, the, I mean, the, and that's something that you almost now you're you're inevitably seeing all of this coming. Like you couldn't have seen a lot of this shit happening in the past. Now everybody's yeah. like, yeah, dude, we are all friends. But by the way, even with your example of Steve Smith basically not understanding half the stuff and then smiling at the things that were in English is precisely like how he bats as well. He's leaving the ones that he can't understand and the ones that he can understand. He's like, yeah, let's, this one's going to the boundary. That's <laughs> True, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Nani Kaur 4 says, Bharat speaks casually to Pat Cummins and Steve Smith. Meanwhile, me commenting on Saurabh stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is this is where we are at. Uh, by the way, Pranam Anand also says uh, they make uh, Steve Ismet do such weird things. Lol. That's why last time he joined by a hologram and wasn't physically present. <laughs> That's a very good point, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm glad that they don't do the hologram shit anymore. I don't know whether they're doing it. Like I haven't seen it, but that was very weird. Where you know, you have the hologram and the people in the studio are just looking in a random direction and just nodding and it yeah. And and the hologram yeah. would not often face the to uh, the anchor and and the other expert either. So I remember watching Faf Duplessis uh, flex facing somewhere else. It was all weird. Like some, I'm glad the hologram's not doing uh, the rounds because uh, I, I remember the joke around the IPL in Australia last year was like, has Steve Smith been held hostage? Because there was that clip before the IPL where there was a clip of him saying that I will be in India. And that was not the hologram. That was Steve Smith in the flesh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was shot. So whoever, I don't know who shot it, it was done in you know, such a weird way that it looked like it was a hostage video. Luckily, it wasn't. Uh, but it, yeah, uh, yeah we, we're getting real life Steve Smith this time. I mean, it is a hostage situation, but the the ransom is being paid to you. So it's it's a weird kind of hostage situation. It is. Where it it's is. your soul that is in hostage, and you're like, dude, this is you can't say no to this amount of money. It's just not possible. So so might as well, yeah. Fair enough. Um, yeah, it's not. Yeah. 
yeah but also i mean it is it is kind of interesting how uh, the changing game of uh, of uh, t20 cricket across the board is that steve smith doesn't get an ipl contract increasingly i think this year you can already tell that the lines are being sort of written for a lot of players who you're like dude this is probably going to be your last go hmm. because your strike rates are on improving strike rates like i was seeing shikhar dhawan who's actually been a fantastic player in the ipl and his overall career strike rate is 125 And I'm mm. like, dude, I think that was good about two years back, and in the last two yeah. years, obviously, he's increased it and improved and all that kind of stuff. But there's a lot of people who are like, dude, you, this is this is probably going to be your last go. Oh, and also at a time when the the guys in their early twenties and mid twenties they seem to be improving year after year, right? I mean, Ryan Parag, and I'm sure we'll discuss him. Uh, he he he's yeah, I mean, he's the highlight of the the season in that sense because of all the criticism that he he got, but. for me i think one of the stand out players is abhishek sharma right i remember interviewing him yeah. years ago before he went for the under 19 world cup uh, i think we interviewed shubman gill and abhishek sharma back to back and they're best friends i don't know if they still are they were uh, as close as anyone and uh, they grew up together or playing cricket together and they were like literally finishing each other's answers i remember back then and he's kind of fallen off uh, uh, you know from where he seemed to be go you know? but just the way his power hitting has come through and you're right the pressure will be on the likes of shikhar dhawan and even mayank agarwal and those guys because uh, power hitting just every year you see especially in the ipl because it's become a yardstick just seems to have gone yeah. to the next level which is why you're also seeing someone like mitchell stark taking a while to get used to it like you know he doesn't play a lot of t20 cricket uh, it's become a, it's been a ch- challenge for him as well even with all his experience Yeah, it's a. Uh, it, it, you can you can almost sense uh, all of it. Like uh, I was, I, I I did this uh, one of these nerdish attempting to be Jared Kimber and failing miserably, where uh, <laughs> I went through the top twenty individual high scores in this IPL so far, and I think six of them led to losing causes, and five of them were from Indian batters. And I was like, oh wait, you, you, the eighty. Like for example, Shubman Gill, eighty nine or forty eight in isolation, mm. fantastic one eighty five strike rate. Yeah. But it depends on what he did in the last twelve thirteen balls, because that difference of six to eight runs is essentially the match. and it's become so it's become so and again i don't know i don't know bharat is like we are just so statistically like we are watching the game like hmm, these robots are not performing as per what my robotic yes. expertise is stands up again they this is they like trying to do their best and we are just like hmm, that ball should have been free minimum <laughs> at least 4.6 he should have scored that ball i think a lot of it is just that right it is in cricket like while cricket is is you know it's a sport kind of tends to statistical analysis and uh this over analysis but uh especially in t20 cricket the expectation you're so right has just grown to such an extent because people are not just like like we used to when we were kids or even when we were just fans you just switch on the tv and you watch the cricket right now people are reading so much more and reading uh, about all this analysis like that jared and the rest do where suddenly they have become like you know uh, not just armchair experts they are armchair analysts like they're sitting there and you're like you're saying you're saying हाँ यार वो सब ठीक है लास्ट ट्वेल्व बॉल्स में तेरा स्ट्राइक रेट क्या है बता लाइक वी नेवर थॉट अबाउट दिस थिंग्स राइट वी वर लाइक अरे उसने मार दिया अभी ताली बजा उसके लिए लाइक वो एटी मार दिया उसने नाइनटी मार दिया सो इट इज लाइक यू नो विराट कोहली इज अ ग्रेट एग्जांपल ऑफ दैट राइट आई मीन देर इज ऑलवेज अ सेक्शन ऑफ पीपल हु रिगार्डलेस ऑफ वेदर ही स्कोर्स रन और नॉट इट्स दे दे गेट इन टू द निटिग्रिटी ऑफ लाइक यू नो वेन ही स्कोर रन हु स्कोर रन अगेंस्ट बिकॉज देर वन इनिंग्स वेर आई थॉट ही बैटेड रियली वेल Uh, and you know I, it was late at night i said something on social media and went to sleep and the next morning like i was like torn apart i was like yeah but it was in a losing cause it was i said that manathan bola ki usne batting theek kiya yaar but it's 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 become that like yeah it's it's i think changed the view changed the uh, completely changed the way we watch ipl cricket but it's funny right then when you see the indian team in t20i cricket nobody like it's not it's not done to that extent then national pride and all that takes over but ipl mein i think yeah. because maybe you're not so invested in the result even though i'm sure there are rcb and mumbai fans you can maybe afford the space to be that critically critically analytical about everything i guess i don't know i mean listen I, let's not get into mi fans so early because otherwise like ashutosh bajpay said people will tell us to be here uh, by the way you have a book uh, uh, about suresh raina called believe i mean you already know what is sanjay manjrekar biography is going to be called you have the title this <laughs> <Just> behave <laughs> stop what a good line that was though yeah i like yeah. i i actually enjoyed it like yeah, sanjay manjrekar being <laughs> the stern headmaster yeah 
Yeah, and he's also got the whole beard and everything growth yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. And he's like he's reached that point where he has become the stern headmaster. So he's go- he's I think leaning more into it. And I think like <laughs> across the board, you as a commentator, either you got to give me analysis, entertainment, or something for people to get worked up about. Oh, so absolutely. So Sanjay Manjrekar repeatedly does that. So I think he's doing his job very well. Oh, totally. I mean, look, Michael Vaughn is a master at that, right? Like people think that Michael Vaughn hates <laughs> India and all of that. He's the master shit stirrer. I mean, he. He loves India. I mean, trust me. I know Michael. He he loves India. He loves Indian cricket, and but he also understands he can play a role and really mess people up. And that's what he does so well. Like yeah, uh, uh, the things he says against India, even like if he's not connected to a series, even if England are not playing, it's all you. So you have to be that kind of disruptor, right? You you and I are both WWE fans. Like you have to be yeah. a heel. If you, if you cannot be the ultimate baby face, like you have to be the. So I mean, look at England, right? If you, you already have Atherton and Nasser Hussain. They're the ultimate baby faces. Nobody's going to touch them. So you need yeah. the need a heel, and Michael Vaughan is the classic heel. Dude, I love I love how he, I think in on the club prairie he said that I don't think Indians a lot of the times understand irony because I think in one of the podcasts he said something about how I think he's been making fun of baseball being the end of everything. Yeah. And I think he made some reference to Scali and carried in like 19 different newspapers. <laughs> like, dude, I guess not, re- not hearing the context and the way he's saying it. He's fucking trolling all of you, and you're all like, just please, please troll us, Michael Watt. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They, they, everybody falls for it. It's quite fun. Like, yeah. uh, but credit to him, he's a smart guy. He knows how to do it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'll take a few uh, few statements, questions that have come in from uh, uh, from the audience uh, as well, and we'll get uh, into RR uh, yeah. versus RCB as well. There's just a few things uh, that uh, sorry, uh, sorry, we have to do. Uh, Feral Mind says, uh, to be fair, Steve Smith always looks a little hologrammy. Um, <laughs> Uh, Nani Corfor says Steve Smith is his wildest dreams. Didn't think he would play cricket with with Indian YouTubers. I think I think in the last few months, Indian YouTubers have been playing more cricket with international cricketers than <laughs> cricketers themselves. Munawar is getting Sachin Tendulkar out. Anything is happening. Um, Jardani Jawanovic says uh, I can see Warner doing a full dance video as a commentator next year, and uh, that too in Telugu. 150 percent uh, waiting to happen. All of this stuff. And uh, Illuminati says. Uh, Warner will become Danny Morrison in a few years. Namaskar, Bengaluru, for sure. <laughs> all of this is all of this is basically impending reality. Um, yep. Okay, let's get into the game. It's uh, uh, RCB, of course. Um, I think right from the start, right from the uh, the auction time, everybody, like, experts like you, etc., was saying, "Hey, do you guys need bowlers at some stage?" And now it's reached a point where it's uh, RCB is just not uh, this. They played Reece Topley for one match. I hope they don't drop him because, I mean, you can't just yeah. judge the guy on one match. Uh, so, what do you think the lineup is going to be? There's a lot of chat about uh, how RCB is going to sort of line up the bowlers this year. Uh, no, I think Reece Topley has to play, right? And you're right. Uh, yeah. the, their problem is that historically, the, their batters have bailed them out, right? Like, they have yeah. so many runs that even with pretty ordinary bowling attacks, they've stayed in the game. The problem for them is, except Virat, nobody's really scored runs, right? Like, I think Lomroor got yeah. some runs last time. Uh, and DK finished that one game off, which they won. But uh, the top order, uh, statistically, they're so terrible this year so far. I mean, Faf, Maxi, and Maxwell, and Cameron Green is still, you know, just feeling in, himself by, into that RCB mix. And I was thinking about it uh, uh, earlier today. It's like they've become like that kid in the neighborhood, right? Like a few years ago, even though because he, he has rich parents, uh, even though he wasn't doing really great in his exams, fail or tejarata, we all made fun of them. No, not me so much, but everybody was making fun of them. Now you've almost reached a point where you're feeling bad for that kid. You're like, they pass ho jaya. Yeah? Like you know, uh, it's no longer about your parents being rich. It's it's you can see the mistakes he's making. You know, or tuition bunk kar rahe, or like you know, he's just like like skipping classes which he should not be skipping. But like RCB not picking bowlers or like m- messing up their auctions. They keep making the same mistakes, uh, and it just doesn't work unless they have someone really have an extraordinary year, like we've seen in the past with Gale or Virat or A.B. De Villiers or those kind of guys. It, to take like you know the top three just outscoring everyone else, uh, and that would lead them to like winning uh, uh, some clutch matches purely on the, on the basis of that. Rarely have they had like I, I guess when che- Chehel was there, at least you knew that you'd get wickets from one guy. Like ever since uh, Yuzvendra. 
chairs as well. You look at that bowling attack and you're like, uh, okay, where are you getting your wickets from, right? And, <laughs> yeah. and Rajasthan are the exact example or, or the opposite of that, where they take so many wickets in the power play. And throughout the 20 overs, every time you see a bowler, invariably you're like, oh, I think there could be a wicket now. With RCB, you just don't see that. And I guess it's, yeah, it's it's what they do in the auctions, but it's also the makeup of their side. Uh, I guess it just doesn't fit. Like, yeah, they, they're so reliant on just five bowlers. It's a lot like India and in, back in the day in T20I cricket, right? Like, you just had five bowlers, so they had to click. And I mean, and you're not talking high-quality five bowler, bowlers either with RCB. So, yeah, I think someone like Reece Stopley, who unfortunately keeps getting injured whenever he goes to India, uh, make the most of him till he's around. Like, yeah. So yeah. he does give you wickets, though. That's that's the, that's what they need. Early wickets as well. Yeah, but I, you know the way I, I was thinking about the RCB, like it's like somebody who has diabetes, right? And they're like, you know what? Yeah. For years, they're like, you know, I really need to resolve this diabetes. And people are like, that's yeah, true. you got to change your diet. You got to do something. And they're like, no, but I like sugar. And they're like, no, listen, yeah. you can't get rid of this diabetes by not something. They're like, no, listen, I still, I want the diabetes. And I also want to eat sugar. I want to eat nine ch chocolate cakes a day. And I'm like, you can't yeah. have both. And the greatest summary, by the way, absolutely genius was Ambati Raidu, who, if you didn't follow, this is what he said about RCB. Uh, he said, who are all batting in pressure situations? The young Indian batters and Dinesh Karthik, the big international names who are supposed to take the pressure. Where are they? All are in the back in the dressing room. 16 mm -hmm. years is the same story of RCB. When there is pressure, no big name is ever found standing. All youngsters are playing at the back end and all the big guns bat at the top of the order and they whip off the cream from the cake. And that is the reason this team has never won the IPL. I mean, what a well-composed... Uh, I mean, that literally nails it on the head. So, yeah. uh, this was uh, Ambati Raidu on Star Sports, uh, which just makes perfect sense. Oh, yeah. And that's one thing you spoke about, like commentators having some sort of gimmick. And that's just Ambati Raidu for you. Like, that's just how he is. Like, he's uh, a sharpshooter. <laughs> like, you know, he doesn't uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. suffer any fools. And he's always been like that, right? You've seen him get into... Uh, like, you know, issues with his own teammates on the field. There was a thing with him and Harbhajan years ago in Mumbai. But that's just Ambati Raidu in a, in a nutshell. So I'm glad that you, you're getting people like him in the commentary box. Uh, right? Yeah. Like, uh, and hopefully the next uh, set of commentators we do get end up being like that. Like, you know, with that sense of like, we have nothing to lose and we can kind of talk straight like like he is done but yeah you're right i mean he's just he's just nailed it that's that's the problem like none of them um really has like i mean they try finishing games from the top right there's an expression that gets used a lot in t20 cricket uh but rarely do you see one of them like finishing it off in the end if that makes sense right and uh that just and again we speak so much about their batting but the problem also is that they just don't have the bowling to uh, if you are RCB and if you bat first, unless you make 200, it's so difficult for you to kind of stay on top of the game. You're still playing catch up in that sense because you just don't get wickets early on, especially. Yeah, it's uh, basically you need you need somebody to finish off. I mean, that's that's that. I mean, I, I don't want to get too sexual by saying that, but you need finish him. That is uh, what we need. I'm going to remove my hat. Um, yes. oh, we'll take a few more comments that have popped in, um, which is uh, uh, Ashutosh Bajpayee has a very elementary thing where he says, first mistake of RCB, you don't make a foreign captain, uh, a, a foreigner captain until he's really good, should have gone after an Indian batter like Shreyas or KL as captain. Uh, listen, I'm not so sure anybody's very convinced by either of those two as a captain at the moment. Uh, <laughs> given, I, I think if you were to compare uh, Fafru and Shriyas and KL uh, in batting at the moment, I think I think it would be pretty even. So I'm not sure that's the best example. But I, I get your point. <laughs> mm. um, and uh, Gabriel is on another trip where he talks about fast bowlers like Mayank Yadav are expensive in pitches like West Indies. Do you think Mohit Sharma will have more advantage on those pitches? I mean, great point, but I sincerely doubt India will go that way because it seems like uh, we want we want show we want everybody we want showboaters. Like Mohit Sharma is good, but what's his Instagram game like? Does he have that hairdo which is like that? Does he look like Surya Kumar mm. Yadav? None of that stuff. Mohit Sharma looks like a guy who goes to work every day. That's not what we want. We want we want pizzazz. What's it? Oh, absolutely. And Mohit Sharma, like back in the day. I always used to come, uh, say that he looks like uh, the guy who will sh sell you an insurance policy high end. And it yeah. always looked like he comes to the ground, just parks, like keeps his briefcase somewhere, takes his tie off, the, the, the jacket off or whatever he's wearing, the shirt off, the formal wear, 
puts on his cricket gear, plays a match and goes off. But yeah. I don't know whether you've noticed this year. Uh, uh, I noticed him doing it the most. He started doing this big namaste thing after he takes a wicket every time. I don't know whether it's a big... It, it's where India is right now as a country. A lot of people have started doing this namaste thing after taking a wicket. But him, I've noticed... Maybe I've just watched more uh, uh, Gujarat games than other teams. But he, he does seem to... Maybe that's his new thing. Maybe he, he can get yeah. back into the team because he does namaste. But no, I, I, I was intrigued by the Mohit Sharma... Uh, performances uh, and what he hasn't played for India since 2015 and I think his time has come and gone like there was a period where uh, I thought he was very effective as a T20 bowler uh, but yeah I mean when you see pace like what Mayank Yadav has like yeah, whether he goes to the World Cup or not uh, yeah that's that's the only pizzazz you need right whether Mayank Yadav does something to his hair or not if you can bowl 157 yeah. you can look whatever the way you want to look like and and generally like you know if you bowl that fast Eventually, you'll start looking cool, right? Like, even if you're not cool. <laughs> I think that's just yeah, yeah. how nature works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think... I mean, let's 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 talk about all the 150-plus bowlers. It's <laughs> All of them have looked great when you really think about it. They're all good-looking. Sean Tate, Shoe Bakhtar, Brett Lee. Oh, my God, dude. Is that is that what's required to look good in cricket is to bowl fast and then you just become a figure of intense um, uh, macho sexuality? Is that what, is that what we're looking for? I think My so. God. I mean, uh, like you and I wouldn't know. I've never touched yeah. 150, but uh, uh, for obvious reasons, yeah. maybe like, you know, maybe maybe it's the other way around. Maybe you need to be good looking to bowl really fast. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't really focused on, I haven't really studied Mayank Yadav. Uh, you've seen yeah. a little more of him. I love to see him up and close and personal. I have, I have a strong feeling he'll be here for the Border Gavaska Trophy. I, I tell you what, in, in eight months time, we'll do the show again and we'll discuss like Mayank Yadav Purely in terms of his the aesthetics of his looks, not his bowling. Yeah, yeah, but I think, but obviously, like you know, it's a it's a thing. I'm sure it's a, if you can do something like that. Uh, yeah, people are kind of like yeah. my Mitchell Johnson, another one you forgot. Like yeah, oh, Mitchell Johnson, another one. Good. Yeah, yeah, but also I'm assuming that as a batter, when you're batting and somebody's looking that good and steaming in, also one part of you is like, I'm so ugly compared to this guy, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, exactly. Like, I mean, I he deserves my wicket. This guy looks like he does grooming. He works out way better. His his gym schedule is more than me. So you're intimidated on two levels. Yeah, and 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 the worst thing you can do is get out because then you have to take your helmet and people can see what you look like. So. <laughs> No wonder everybody says the best way to pay them is yeah. to go to the non-striker then, right? Don't expose yourself. Yeah. Not you wicked. Who yeah. cares about you wicked? But don't let people see what you look like under the helmet. That makes all the sense. Yeah. In the world. <laughs> what, a, what a cucking that would be, right? The guy's got you out when you remove the helmet and then you're like, you, this guy, he looks gross as well. This is yes. bizarre, good, dude. Good, good thing we got rid of him. Like, that guy's been on my camera? Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's take a. Uh, Aryan has a very good question about Mohit Sharma. Where are his tattoos? Absolutely correct. You can't be in the Indian team now without any tattoos unless you're Jaspreet Bumrah or Mohit Sharma. Those are the two exceptions to the rule. Mm. Um, and um, everybody else has them. Okay, uh, George is coming with the update. Uh, Rajasthan Royals are going to be fielding yeah. first, uh, which is uh, interesting. Um, and it's uh, Jaipur. Uh, I, I don't know how the pitch behaves. I'm not even going to pretend I know. Uh, how does do you know any of these things about how pitches behave and uh, the, during due on a on a uh, April sixth? Uh, how, how with the average score? <laughs> do you know any of this kind of stuff? Uh, no, I think the, uh, I was just I do read the previews just uh, to know what I'm uh, what, what's happening in the IPL. And they said that um, the last two games, 180 has been scored. One during an afternoon game, one at night, but. Uh, from if memory serves me right, in April, especially in that part of India, there is a lot of dew at night. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. Maybe that's why they are they are fielding first, uh, and they do have yeah. a lot of they do rely a lot in the middle overs on Ashwin and Chahal. So maybe that's one of the reasons they uh, are fielding first. Like I don't know whether the playing oh yeah they're playing eleven is here as well. So uh, yeah, Reese Topley is in there. Uh, if you are Thank wondering God. for RCB, so that's good. Uh, this uh, oh man, but the challenge of like not being in India and trying to keep an eye on the IPL is uh, it, it also feels like you know, uh, it, this might sound politically incorrect that Indian cricket is run out of all the um, like different names. They it, it's like you know, back in the day when we used to play the uh, computer games or the cricket games or, or on. Uh, the simulation ones, where after a point, like, you know, they would run out of names and everybody was Jay Kumar or S. Sharma or whatever. But there's, there's someone called Saurav Chauhan who's playing Saurav for Chauhan, yeah. and, I, and I'm sorry, I don't know much about Saurav Chauhan. But there's, there's so many yashas, 
so many mayanks it's man it's so difficult to keep uh keep on top of these things especially when you're not there so so hopefully someone can tell us what saurav chavan does uh is a uh, looks like he's a bowler so i'm going to assume it's a seam bowler listen i'm just happy that rcb is playing any indians right now because i think like there was talk where a lot of people were saying just drop maxwell drop either drop maxwell or green a lot of people were basically saying that yeah. as well so that that uh, conversation has been around but i think probably this would be the last go for either of them if both mm. of them don't do well this one they're probably the next game because again i think the rule across the board seems to be that you want to give people uh, you can fail three times in four matches yeah. and that's the end of that uh post that yeah. it gets a little awkward yeah or, or fifth, I, fifth matches i mean because green again i mean I, like uh, across australia in, in general you you uh, uh, guys have been projecting him as the future of all cricket and all that kind of stuff and occasionally you can sense it but yeah. i'm i'm like dude that's uh, like Mich- michel stark has got less pressure on him than cameron green sometimes yeah, yeah. but oh, also that- when he gets going it's like watching daryl michel uh, cameron green and mitch marsh these three players when they get going you're like dude just and uh, no criticism i uh, do, do yeah, what yeah, you need yeah. to do yeah 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 uh, well that's been poor cameron greens uh, the story of his life since he made his debut international debut against india what three summers ago because yeah. he's just gone from he plays international cricket and now since last year he plays ipl he doesn't yeah. rarely gets a chance to go play domestic cricket and really work on his game so he's just been thrown into the deep end um and i think he the test innings he played in new zealand was his best so it looks like is coming of age in that format and i had yeah. this theory i told a lot of australians that i think the reason green clicked last year for mumbai is purely in my opinion because of my old friend rohit sharma like i can totally picture what would have happened like he would have gone up to him and said after you know green started slowly for mumbai as well right i can totally yeah. picture like are are green yeah i can't come i don't look i uh, we paid you a lot of money okay I, you just go there and like i i'll give you yeah i trust you yeah yeah I, you have my trust I'll give you four games. Are you go out and like hit the ball? Are we haven't paid you money to like? Are go hit this pitch? And, and it worked out, right? Like he's needed yeah. that all his life. He's needed that Rohit Sharma in his life, and yeah. I think it worked out perfectly. I, I can so picture Rohit have, having had exactly that conversation with him, exactly like that. So uh, I think he, uh, I don't know who's speaking to him in in the uh, in the RCB camp. He has definitely matured as a person. Cameron Green so hopefully he comes good but I can't see them dropping Maxwell yeah because yeah that's the Maxwell thing right you you know he's going to give you those two matches when he'll just win it for you right that's just how he is like Maxwell will go through a lean patch and then do that do a Maxwell so it'll be interesting to see what they do with him even if he fails today and also RCB can't drop their best bowler i mean that's a, that's, no, a that's tough one yeah <laughs> they can't <laughs> But yeah, he's the only one who's taken yeah. four wickets, right? More than two wickets. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, Pranavan says Rohit would have just gone to Green and said, "Yar, tu na jaakar, wo kar de bas." <laughs> Which is basically <laughs> one of the most. Yeah. Uh, okay, so a lot of people are confused about Jardani Jovanovic has said uh, nobody knew about Ankrish. Uh, uh, by the way, the, one of the best post uh, interview uh, mid match interviews uh, between Harsha Bogle and him that I've seen. Uh, Shashank or Mayank either new kind of name is exciting these days. Um, absolutely makes sense. Uh, might be a great player. Uh, Bro, Saurav Chauhan for Anuj Radhav Rawat. What the hell is happening? Uh, and uh, he should have replaced Pathida. These are the comments. But bases the last. Uh, I think this is a stat that popped up on Crick Info as well about uh, Anuj Rawat. Is that the first match that he played? He scored forty-eight of twenty-five balls, mm. and then since then he scored twenty-five of forty-eight balls. So he sort of literally, like, I mean, this is the very definition of reversal <laughs> of, of fortunes. For like, you know, a statistician saw that and went like, <laughs> "You'll never guess what I have." <laughs> so, so you get it. I mean, like, uh, uh, I think I think that's the problem with uh, a lot of these younger cricketers in India is that you two failures and you're just you're just out of there. Um, but uh, let's go from rcb to rr for a second because rr oh. uh, along with kkr seem to be the two most complete sides uh, on display so far um, they, there's been some good bowling great batting uh, batting uh, lineup looks stocked and they uh, ho- holding uh, off hitmaya what, what do you think of how rr has been doing so far yeah and despite like butler and jaiswal not scoring runs right i mean it, it's been the season yeah. of ryan parag in that sense right like after all the criticism and we spoke i said earlier about like RCB being that kid in the building who keeps failing his exams. Like Ryan Parag, Parag was like that relative of yours who you know comes to every wedding, does a dance, and but it, like you know you ask him, "Kya kar raha life mein?" He has nothing to add. Like and his parents are. Hey, that's what it felt like reading about him on social media. Even though I wasn't there, uh, he felt yeah. like 
it, it, I don't know, poor kid, like the way he was being criticized was like, he disappointed everyone. Like, you know, everyone had like invested in him, everyone in India. Yeah. And he's lead let everyone down. Like, yeah, just because he did a dance or he said something on social media. So I'm really happy for him that yeah, he's having a, a great season and he seems to have grown like Abhishek Sharma I mentioned earlier. But um, uh, I think uh, uh, Ashwin at number five has clicked. He started hitting sixes and stuff. Uh, and Sanju Samson always starts IPL seasons well, right? Like he's just, uh, there's something about him. Uh, I, I'm yeah. not like, you know, he must, there must be a, a sporting analogy out there, some English Premier League, which, which always starts well and then a kind of fades away as the season progresses. But at some point, you'd expect Butler to come good. He generally does in the IPL. Uh, and Justice Jaiswal, we all know what he can do. So, uh, despite that, they look so consistent. But I, again, I think it's just what they have with the ball. Yeah? I mean, they are just, I mean, when you have Bolt, Ashwin, and Chehel in the same team, uh, yeah. uh, like, you know, Ashwin's going to give you, even if he doesn't run through sides in T20 cricket. He's a, he's a banker, right? And him and Sanju Samson seem to have that. I feel like I'm watch, I'm at a Tamil wedding every time Ashwin comes on to bowl. Like, you know, they start having these very, very Tamil uncle conversations. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, like, like what, what about, have you, because I don't, I don't speak Tamil. What, what are the conversations you've overheard? Oh, no. I mean, like, uh, 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 the last game I saw, like, as soon as I, uh, I knew Ashwin was coming on because here uh, on Foxtel, they don't have ads. So, they went into the break and they came back and you could hear someone speaking in Tamil. I was like, oh, Ashwin's coming on to bowl. It was like, I mean, but Sanju Samson is very reverential towards Ashwin. Like, you know, he speaks, yeah. I mean, he uses the Tamil version of AAP, like, you know, yeah, ninga, yeah. Ninga, he keeps saying uh, when he speaks to him. But uh, it, it, it's it's a very like younger brother, elder brother. He's like, yeah, okay, I've said this field to you. Just finish well. You do this well. Like there's uh, uh, nothing specific so far. I haven't like picked up on anything, any plan that they mentioned. Maybe I'll have to stay up and watch that tonight. They're bowling first. That's a good sign. Uh, but yeah, so so Ashwin's going to do that. And Bolt is just a, you know, he's just, yeah, yeah. unfortunately for New Zealand, I was in New Zealand last month and poor guys, yeah, they're really missing him. And you know what I was doing? So I was doing commentary with uh, on radio with Ian Smith and Jeremy Foney, which is when the Ambani wedding was going on. And every yeah, time yeah. New Zealand was struggling to take a wicket, I would show them clips of Trent Bolt at the Ambani wedding and say, that guy would have done pretty well, wouldn't he, Smithy? And <laughs> the Ian Smith would throw his headset away and get really pissed off. So, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, when you have a bowling attack like that, like, you know, you're yeah. never out of the game, which is what, what we said earlier with RCB. Their batters have to give them a total. Otherwise, you know, it's game over. Uh, so... Uh, no, they're just a complete team. Hopefully, they can stay consistent. A a another guy who hasn't fired so far is Hetmeyer, right? Like, yeah, all of yeah. Uh, not, not all of West Indies, but all of Guyana is waiting to see what he'll do. Uh, but uh, yeah, look, uh, they just and I, I like, you know, even when you look at the guys who aren't playing, like Rauman Powell, who's West Indies captain, and a few others, uh, I'm sure they'll have an impact. So they'll see how Hetmeyer goes for a while. If he doesn't click, you can always bring Rauman in. Yeah, but also like, uh, I mean, with uh, with Riyan Parag, everybody's say, talking about how he's really matured, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And I, I think in Indian terms, uh, maturity means that you've stopped dancing randomly and you've grown a beard. And That's that is it. all that is required. Those are the two oh, elements oh, oh. of basically <laughs> being a mature player. <laughs> That's all that is, yeah. Yeah, uh, and you again, get that stern look that he seems to have got now. He's got yeah, a very yeah. stern look, if you notice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so okay, so uh, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, to this uh, this whole thing. I, there's one legend who I'd like to talk about. Um, I was reading these two stats, okay, and they're pretty close. Uh, I'll read you the stats of two bowlers and the IPL records. Uh, one has 118 matches, 125 wickets. Uh, average of 27, economy of 7.8. The other has 123 matches, 148 wickets, uh, average of 23 and economy of 7.3. And that's the comparison between Sandeep Sharma and uh, Bumrah. So it's, it's I mean, I, I think yeah. I think Harsha Bhogland mentioned this on Cricket Buzz where the stats are pretty close. And the more you see the stats, you're like, dude, this is, this guy is like just a fantastic bowler. Like there should be more money for him. Oh, uh, I mean, there was a time, I remember in Indian cricket, maybe six years ago, uh, maybe before the 2018 um, in India Tour of England, and I'm talking Test Tour, there were some people who felt like, man, like, you know, this is when Booby was like not fit, right? He missed most of the series. And there was talk that if there's one guy who can replace Booby in the Test side, it could be Sandeep Sharma, uh, just with yeah. the ball, like the way he bowls. And he's always been, he's always been highly rated, like, you know, uh, like you 
compare him to someone like Deepak Chahar, who had that great start. I remember 2008-9, he I took that big bag of wickets, 9 for or 8 for, uh, and then had a great Ranji season and just kind of fell away, got injured and fell away, and then came back with Chennai and all that. Like Sandeep Sharma has just been consistent. Like, you know, every yeah. IPL season, I'm not surprised that his numbers are so good. And his record I was reading against Virat Kohli is really good, against Maxwell yeah. is really good, and he gets big players out. Uh, I think a few years ago, he would always take the new ball and then still be able to bowl in the depth. I think that role has changed with uh, Bolt, uh, the new ball. He comes in and he doesn't always finish his quota either. Well, he's just such a trustworthy bowler, right? Like he's, I mean, he's the classic. He doesn't have anything uh, fancy about him, right? Like at least Mohit Sharma does a namaste. He doesn't even do that. So, <laughs> yeah. but he, yeah. I think he just flies under the radar because of that. He just looks like an everyday guy, doesn't he? Like I, yeah, I yeah. know so many people who look like Sandeep Sharma. He's got the the most everyday face uh, out there, and uh, I think it is like unfortunately, maybe it's time he did. And he has not really changed his look either, right? Yeah, he, yeah. I think maybe he had a French beer at some point. Maybe he has one now. <laughs> but that's yeah, the, the most beer. I've ever seen him do. And he's used the same conditioner because his hair always looks really like gloriously yeah. like it's a very nice flat mop kind of thing. Very, yeah. it's a, it's perfect. But also, yeah, he rarely celebrates when he gets somebody out. Yeah, he just he's like, ah, I've, I've done now. What do you want? Man? Let's move on. Like you just want Sandeep Sharma to lose it. You just want him to like to look at a bathroom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, fucking do Generation D. Like, just imagine completely out of character. His last season in the <laughs> IPL, Sandeep Sharma is just a badass and starts whipping people in the butt. He like chases Hardik with his bat and say, "Hat Sale." <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope for his sake. Like, yeah. I don't think that will even that will guarantee him uh, ever playing for India again. But uh, because he he used to be in the fringes, right, for a long time. I mean, now, but that's the thing with Indian cricket, you yeah. fall out of the fringes for one year and that's it. Like, so many people just come through. So I feel bad for him. Yeah. Though. Yeah. By the way, you're talking about Virat Kohli's record against Sandeep Sharma. And this is on Crick Info where they said, uh, yeah, Virat Kohli has got 87 of 67 of Sandeep Sharma and he's been dismissed seven times. That is a ridiculous record. I, I don't think anybody would probably, I think they, the closest somebody who came was probably Bhuvaneshwar or something. That is a ridiculous yeah. record by a fantastic bowler, man. So fully, yeah. fully completely on board with that. Um, Cool. Let's take a few questions and then we'll lead into the toss. Uh, Nitin Premraj has said, will Riyan Parag make it to the Indian team? Let's let's just project about this because I think it's way too early to tell. Hmm. Uh, and there's like, I mean, you there's no way you're going to uh, replace Rinku Singh in the side in, in any case. But if he continues in the same vein, vein, do you think there's a likelihood that they'll just take him? Uh, not so soon, I don't think. I mean, look, he's, it's not just IPL, right? He's had like two or at least this last yeah. domestic season seems to have been exceptional. Uh, but he's vying for that place with so many others, right? Like we spoke about yeah. Abhishek Sharma earlier. Uh, and, and like what? There's already, you know, your regulars. And then Yashishwi Jaiswal is broken into the mix. And uh, he'll have to have like, he'll have to do something really out of this. Uh, world. Like, you know, something that the IPL has never seen before to break into the side. And also... Yeah. Hope that Rajasthan not just make it to the playoffs and also win the IPL and then he does something in the final. Like so, so many things have to fall into place for him in, for him to come into the Indian side right away. Uh, but I, I, he will play for India. I mean, the moment he was criticised the way he was, right? Like we've sp followed sport long enough. I mean, such stories always have a happy ending. Right? Like he will come and then he'll become like there'll be this big montage about him being down and everybody like jumping on him and then him rising from the ashes and all of that it's man we watched wrestling long enough as well that's just how life plays out so i can definitely see him play for india when that will be i don't think it'll be the t20 world cup but like, you never know yeah yeah and also i mean now, now that i think about this this rr attack i mean this this burger as well we forgot about An yeah. another burger obviously so it's it's bold ashwin uh chehel sandeep Sharma. i mean that itself is and it's all for people who yeah. are relatively not i wouldn't say underrated but you don't realize how great they all are yeah. like trend yeah. bowls record i mean when this i think when this starts throwing stats I don't know yeah. what it is about cricket that we just eat the stats like delicious. Yeah, yeah. Twenty-five yeah. times wicket in the first over, Trent Bowl is just exciting. Yeah. And, and you and then you see the context of it where you're like, this is across like sixteen years or whatever the shit. But just a great bowling attack, man. And now, so it's basically RR's bowling versus uh, RCB's batting is going to be quite interesting to watch. Yeah, and especially if like look, Bolt can strike early because all yeah. these guys, right, like. Um, everyone from Faf Duplessis, Maxwell Green, 
against that in swinger that he bowls they are all susceptible like you know i think yeah. uh, virat handled them okay over the years but if they get exposed right that top 3 uh, and maxwell and they can get into maxwell and green uh rcb will be in trouble because bolt because i think he bowls three overs in the power play especially if he's getting early wickets like he did in the last game so uh he can just break open the game like he has done so often for whoever he's played for he used to do it for mumbai as well right but you're right they're all such uh greats of the game i mean bolt and ashwin are modern day greats i think yuzvendra chahal is an ipl great in my my opinion sandeep sharma's numbers you mentioned um and, and burger who sanju samson very endearingly refers to as burger and i've heard that on the stump mic a few times uh it's just very quiet i can just hear the stump mic much better than you can if you're watching it in india i think in the adelaide hills it's just silence uh if, if the dogs aren't barking so uh yeah he says it like a proper south indian boy he was not allowed to have burger for a long time in his life so he says it with a bit of greed in his voice yeah. hey burger <laughs> so uh yeah i mean he he's again he's one of those south africans who strikes early as well right uh he takes wickets he's got extra pace uh he has the height so it, it's just a uh, arguably the best bowling attack right now in the IPL yeah it's a great attack uh, so let's do we are 5 minutes away from start time let's do some predictions uh rcb of course batting first uh, what do you think they're going to score what do you think uh, rr is going to score and also one landmark uh, event will happen uh, whatever you think what do you think is going to happen uh, my prediction is rcb will score 186 for 7 Uh, RR will chase it down 187 for eight for some reason, and uh, I think Samju Samson will score 46 of 33 balls. This is the precise, uh, precise uh, uh, everything that I'm providing to you. Uh, Ryan Parag is going to get out on the first five balls. I predict that as well. <laughs> and um, the other prediction I have is that between overs, Ryan Parag is going to shave, come out of the French beard, and he's going to ball off spin because I think they've forgotten that he knows how to also bowl. So. Uh, Uh, wait, I realize they're bowling first, so I screw that up. Maybe, maybe the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fair enough. Uh, I think I'm just just to just to be uh, just to counter what you've said. I think Bangalore are going to win, or Bengaluru are going to win. Um, yeah. I have a feeling Faf Duplessis is going to have one of those days, uh, and so is uh, Maxwell. Uh, and Faf Duplessis, I have a feeling will bat the last five overs. Like you know, that's what the world wants to see. He'll take his top off. He still has yeah. the six pack. I think he's going to bat topless in the last five overs, Pavel Duplessis, <laughs> to finish the innings yeah. uh, because it's humid. You said it's humid in Jaipur. Yeah, yeah. uh, I think they'll make around. They'll make two twenty, two twenty, and uh, Rajasthan are going to uh, come close. Come close. Ryan Parag, I think, is going to make runs, and he's not going to shave yeah. his beard off. Uh, I yeah. think Jaiswal will finally get some runs today, but they'll fall forty runs short. And RCB is forty runs short. Holy shit! That's a bold, bold call. You're a bold, bold man to say forty <laughs> runs short at all. My God, the, you heard the bold call from uh, Bharat Sundaray, and that's a lot. Uh, <laughs> Serial uh, Chilaxa says, "I have complete faith in RCB. They never, uh, they never disappoint." <laughs> That's great. Uh, Kushal Shah has said, uh, "Damn, getting a player of Maharaj's quality as a net bowler is a bold call." Listen, tell that to Michelle Santos sitting at CSK also as I well. Know, I think right? who's actually a way better bowler than even Maharaj would be. Um, so, uh, and uh, Illumin Naughty says, "Well, technically, late ma- last match with RR, RR got for 59." Listen, <laughs> that's that's actually I'd forgotten about that. So maybe maybe Bharat is going to be on target with this. Uh, before we before we head to the match, I got to talk to you about this one thing, this story that broke out. Which is about uh, the 2019 final, um, where, where, where uh, Erasmus and Dharam Sena, Dharam Sena <laughs> basically said that they screwed up. Now, aren't we done with this? Do we have to keep analyzing this goddamn match every like second day, man? Enough with the shit. For those who didn't follow the story, Erasmus and Dharam Sena, Erasmus said that I met Dharam Sena, and we both realized that we had made a wrong call, and that overthrow should have actually been five runs instead of six, and we realized that after the match. So, what do you think about about this coming up again? I mean, poor Maria Erasmus. Like I was there. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's just one of those quirky things. Also, tells me that I'm I've aged because I was there for his first ever Test match in Chittagong 14 years ago, and I was there in Christchurch for his last ever Test match. He had his wife over and everything, uh, and it was a really good send off. Like the whole ground announcer gave him a send off. The players gave him a send off. But for me, the story that like the point of the story that uh, was sweet was. How he met Dharma Sena outside his room in the hotel corridor, like it was just like this. Did they get out of the same room? Like, like that specific, like where that conversation happened really was yeah. interesting. The next morning. 
But look, till the time um, England especially don't win a 50 over World Cup clean, uh, it's not a yeah. clean finish, right? It's like, I mean, for a lot of people, this is the cricket version of the Montreal screw job. Like, it will get spoken yeah, yeah. about years and years from now. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a good time. Like, I think Erasmus is doing a book. So it's a good time to bring the story out. Perfect. 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 Time, right? Great. Like, yeah. Super time. Okay, so Yash Mathur has said, uh, uh, thanks a lot for your super chat. Says, Bolt will send off Virat today. And then immediately after that, Akshat Sethi has said, Blunder, use the opening instead of Bolt. <laughs> so, so I like how that pretty much took care of itself. Anyway, <laughs> uh, match is about to start. Uh, thanks a lot for everybody who tuned in. Uh, uh, Bharat, of course, uh, thanks a lot for your time. Really appreciate it. Anything you'd like to promote, anything coming up, uh, please let us know. No, sure. I mean, look, it's just my uh, in-ring debut on Friday. <laughs> I, I can't add it. It's a real thing. It is. Uh, on Saturday, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to walk out in Ballarat, which is a town outside Melbourne, with a cricket bat in my hand as a guest ring announcer. Uh, and I'm apparently going to be involved in an angle with Eric Bischoff and Great Kali. So good luck to me. I hope. I don't know who I'm, I'm supposed to turn heel on someone. So yeah. I just hope I don't get chopped on the head by Great Kali. That's all I can say. So, yeah, so I can't believe it's a real thing, but it is my in-ring debut. <laughs> Apart from that, uh, I'm just taking it easy, man. And I'm sure we'll do this again and we'll talk more. Uh, so thank you Listen, so much for having me on. Here's my pitch for what you can do with a cricket bat, okay? Right. You're chasing the person with a cricket bat. They're trying to run. And they run right straight to you and you smash them and you say, no run! <laughs> That's the end of it. <laughs> I think, I think that is the problem. I like it. It is. I think the crowd will understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> what I'm doing. Yeah. Anything to avoid getting chopped by Great Kali. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so uh, Bharat's details are in the in the description as well. I'm doing a show in Bangalore on 18th of April. Uh, we've sold zero tickets so far. So, if you want to buy some on, fucking nice. tickets, just buy the goddamn tickets. It's a uh, early bird is 3.99. I'm sure it's it'll sell towards the end. Uh, and thanks a lot for tuning in. Uh, we'll try and come back tomorrow as well. I think uh, there's a few matches to cover. And Bharat, thanks a lot for your time. Thanks a lot for everybody tuning in and all your comments. That's what keeps it running. Uh, take care of yourself. Love you all. Marry me. Goodbye. Ending the stream now. Enjoy the match. Let's hope solar panels are sold for Rajasthan. That is the main aim. Goodbye. <laughs>